the wilds of Papua New Guinea, Professor Brett Nyland is on a microscopic medicine hunt. Brett and his team are searching the medicine cabinets of some of the oldest cultures in the world to find potential life-saving drugs and make their production sustainable. If you find a new drug in a, in a plant, what, what often happens is that plant is harvested or you know, um, chopped down and, and it's all taken away. And what will happen is that drug in that plant will be gone forever. Working with local scientists as well as bush doctors and healers, Brett's work involves isolating specific medicinal plants and then searching for bioactive or useful medicinal compounds. In our particular process is that we look for the fungus and the bacteria that live in the plant because our, I guess one of our major theories is that the drugs are not produced by the plant itself, they're produced by things that live in the plant and these, these are called endophytes. Once these endophytes are identified, the bacteria and fungus that produce them can be cloned, providing an infinite supply of the required drug with no need to harvest them from nature. Papua New Guinea is the perfect place for research like Brett's, with a diverse culture, a rich tradition in bush medicine, and some of the most biodiverse ecosystems on the planet. For a scientist, it's, you know, it, it's like um, you know, Ferdinand Magellan sailing around the planet going, bang, oh, new country. <laughs> you, know, we, we just, you, can't, you can't help but discover things in a, in a place like PNG. But discoveries are also being made closer to home. Back in Sydney, PhD student Kristen Miller is applying Brett's techniques to Chinese medicines and finding that though many of the compounds she's hunting are new to science, they're often ancient history to nature. Finding the, the reason behind why traditional medicines are used is it's something so exciting. It's like validating the traditional medicine that has been used for two centuries. Some of the oldest traditional medicine is that of Indigenous Australia. On the outskirts of suburban Sydney, Brett's PhD student Shane Ingrey is studying plants that have been used for millennia, but are only now being understood. So this is a leptosperm species, um, or coastal tea tree. This was used for, you could boil these types of leaves up or heat them up in a water and use it as a wash for any kind of infection or like a wound opening or whatnot. So I'm just going to take a section of the stem back and some leaves back to work on in the lab. Well, I've always found that it's a good way to mix like my traditional and cultural learnings in with sort of modern day science and it's a good way to one get people interested in science especially from the indigenous communities and also to look at our indigenous plants which a lot of people think are just the medicine plants are just you know hoodoo but it's good that you can take this back to the lab and prove that it was actually like there were medicinal properties and finding that they can cure certain diseases that are still around today. All around the world, traditional medicinal plants, as well as modern plant-based medicines, are in constant demand. If we're to balance the health of humanity with the health of the environment, then developing new science like this is critical. Having our hands on the technology we do have, and then coupling that with tens of thousands of year old knowledge, it's, it's all like, it all fits together perfectly. It's like, why, why ignore this stuff? There's millions of drugs out there waiting to be discovered.